السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأصلي وأسلم على سيد الأولين والآخرين وإمام الأنبياء والمرسلين نبي الهدى والرحمة نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وصحبه وسلم اللهم إنا نسألك يا حي يا قيوم يا بديع السماوات والأرض أن توفقنا لما تحب وترضى آمين اللهم إنا نستغفرك ونتوب إليك من السيئات والذنوب كلها دقيقها ودليلها اللهم اهدنا لأحسن الأقوال والأفعال لا يهدي لأحسنها إلا أنت اللهم اصرف عنا سيئها لا يصرف عنا سيئها إلا أنت Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته In the previous episode of this series we started to speak about the basic principles to understand anything in our life the basic principles to understand anything in our life in order to start to act upon it so previously or in the last episode we gave the example of buying a new machine and you want to run this a new machine and we gave the example of buying a washing machine you got the right manual for that machine you started to read through that manual in order to understand the instructions given by the manufacturer and once you feel that you have understood those instructions carefully you will start to implement them again carefully one by one let us say that the manual of instructions says you need to switch it on and you need to wait for five seconds before going to the next step the next step is to switch button A on and then you need to move button B for example to the right and then you need to decide which program you need to use and you need to select it the instruction says make sure that you don't put the machine on before making sure that the water line is connected and make sure that maybe the disposal line is also connected where the water comes out now these are the instructions that has been given to you you started to follow these instructions now you felt as we say that you have understood them and you will start now to follow these instructions you start you put it on waited for five seconds and then you move to the next step oh the machine did not work the machine did not work what are you going to do you will ask yourself oh have i got the right manual this is the first question did i get the right manual you will check the manual that you have seen you will check the book that you have taken and after coming up with a conclusion that it was the right manual you will move to the next step did I read it carefully means have I understood it correctly or not and you will try to read it again to double check your understanding then once you come up with a conclusion that you have understood it correctly you will start to review the process the, your implementation of the process switching it on waiting for five seconds moving to button B or button A putting it on and then put this switch B to the left side and select then your program but you said oh the instructions are saying that make sure that you connect the line of the water before you switch it on oh this was our mistake we did not put the 
water line before switching it on. So we need to start again. So what did you go wrong? I'm sure all of us would say that we went wrong in what? In the implementation stage. You cannot accuse that the manual was wrong. You may accuse your understanding of the manual, but if you are trying to follow carefully and you have read it carefully, you have understood it carefully, and it was so simple, and then after following that, you discovered that, oh, you did not follow this step, then the result that you had, which is the fact that the machine did not operate, is because of wrong implementation. And because of wrong implementation, you ended up by the machine not working, which means that a distorted implementation. I think the process now is clear. You need to get the right source. After getting the right source, you need to understand it correctly, and then you need to implement it correctly. So let us go back again. Correct sources of information, correct understanding of those sources, and then the third step is correct implementation of what you have understood. Means correct implementation of correct understanding of the correct sources. These are the rational steps. Brothers and sisters, try to analyze anything, any activity you do in your life, you will see that you are following these steps by a way or another. You might follow them in a certain pattern, you might be following them in a different pattern, but it can be classified as the same process. So that's why we have to be careful about this. Okay? Now, let us come to Al-Islam. How do we understand Al-Islam? Do we follow the same process? Or do we follow a different thing? A different process? As I told you, brothers and sisters, Al-Islam is a natural religion. It is a religion of our nature, suitable for our nature. It is not alien to our nature, whether Muslims or non-Muslims. Non-Muslims are not alien to Al-Islam, and that's why they can approach Al-Islam, they can understand Al-Islam, and they can become Muslims as simple as that. So they should not say that, oh, it is an alien religion, it is an alien way of thinking, it is an alien system, we have to follow something different in order to just understand it. No, that is not true. You can follow the same systematic approach that you follow in running a machine, and then you will be able to, what, understand Al-Islam. Okay, let us go to Al-Islam and examine whether we can follow the same step or whether the same process is the process to be followed. We said that the first step is to get the right sources that talk about this machine. Now, Al-Islam. We need to get the right sources of Al-Islam. Is that true or not? I think all of us agree that Al-Islam came from somewhere. And we need to get the right sources of Al-Islam. We have no source about Al-Islam that is not right. Had we have the wrong sources about Al-Islam, we will end up with the wrong conclusion about Al-Islam. As simple as that. Had we have a distorted source about Al-Islam, then we will end up with a distorted understanding or a distorted implementation. Remember this. That is very important. The second step is those sources or this text the text that talk about Al-Islam, the authentic text, the right text, the correct text, we need to understand it correctly. We need to have the right understanding of the right text. Does that make sense? Is that a logical, a rational approach? Yes, of course, because you have a text. A text means something written. But that, what is written, has a meaning. So you need to understand the meaning, what the author wanted. 
the one who revealed this text, what he wanted us to understand from this text. So, the next step is to what? Is to get the right understanding of the text, to get the right understanding of the source. That's fine. That is excellent. What is the third step? Do we move to the step related to implementation? Of course, yes. Of course, yes. We got the text. We had the meaning of the text. Now we need to implement what we understood from the text on the situation that we are facing. That is excellent. So we have three steps. Getting the correct sources of al-Islam or about al-Islam, get the right understanding of those sources, and then implement the right understanding of the right sources. So we have three steps again. Correct sources, correct understanding, and correct implementation. Correct sources, correct understanding, and correct implementation. Now, you might say that the first two steps are the most important steps. Yes, that's fine. But we have the third step, which is the, maybe the conclusion of the first two steps, which is the step related to the implementation of what you understood. Let us have a break, and inshallah we will continue after the break. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. <laughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Welcome back brothers and sisters Just before the break we were discussing the main steps to understand and implement al-Islam We said that the first step is to get the correct sources about al-Islam The second step is to get what the right understanding of those sources now, the third step is to have the right implementation of the right understanding of the right sources. Again, correct sources of information, correct understanding of the information, and correct implementation of the understanding of those sources. That is excellent. Three steps, and also, as you can see, that those three steps are interconnected with each other. The getting the correct sources, getting the correct understanding, and getting the correct implementation. Now, brothers and sisters, why do we need to go through this classification? No, that classification is very important. Remember the example of the washing machine. We said that you got the manual, then you start to read it in order to understand it, and then you started to implement what you understood, and then the machine did not work. Something went wrong. Where? How? You need to know where you went wrong in order to correct it. If you fail to understand where you went wrong, you won't be able to correct yourself. Similarly, if we have a distorted understanding about al-Islam, a distorted implementation of al-Islam, a distorted practice, a distorted Islamic practice or a distorted practice that has been attributed to al-Islam. Where did this come from? So we need to go through these steps in order to see where we went wrong and hence we would be able to correct it. Oh, that is fine. Now, we see around us that there are so many deviant groups. Those deviant groups, where did they go wrong? Did they get the correct sources of Al-Islam, but they had the wrong understanding of those sources? Did they understood those correct sources correctly, yet when they come to the implementation, they did not implement them correctly, for sure they went wrong in one of those steps, and hence if they want to correct themselves, they should be able to identify where they went wrong. Let us take a practical example. 
a very practical example. You know, in so many non-Muslim countries, Muslims have a problem with halal meat. Muslims have a problem with halal meat. Okay, a brother with his wife, let us say Yusuf, went with his wife, Salwa. Yusuf and Salwa, they went to the supermarket and it is a non-Muslim country and that supermarket is owned by a big company, it is a non-Muslim company. And they saw meat there. They would like to know whether this meat is a halal meat or not. So, Yusuf and Salwa, they started to have a discussion in the supermarket. This is a practical example. Yusuf said to his wife, no, this meat is okay, let us buy from it and let us use it. Salwa said to him, and always sisters are a bit skeptical, and they are a bit more careful. She said to him, no, this is a haram meat. He said, what? Haram meat? Can't we eat this meat? She said, yes. It is not a halal meat because it has not been slaughtered. Then Yusuf would ask her, what is your delete that it is a haram meat? Salwa will tell him, Allah Jalla wa Ala says in the Quran, حرجمت عليكم الميتة. الميتة made prohibited for you. Yusuf will think about this and he will say, حرجمت عليكم الميتة. This is a Quranic ayah, means an authentic source. And this ayah, this verse says, the mayta is prohibited. So it is clear that eating the mayta, the non-slaughtered meat is prohibited. Okay, I agree with you. Then he will go to the third step. But he will say, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is this ayah, is this verse from the Quran talking about this specific meat that we want to buy from this specific shop? Then Salwa got stuck here. How can she prove her point? She used the ayah or she quoted the ayah. Yusuf had no problem with quoting the ayah. She told him that the understanding of this ayah is this, and Yusuf has no problem with this understanding, but Yusuf has a problem in what? He has a problem in the implementation of this correct understanding of this authentic verse, which is an ayah, on this situation. So in which step they had this disagreement? The first step, which is getting the right source, is there. The second step, which is getting the correct understanding, is there. The third step, which is what? Getting the implementation of that correct understanding is not there. And that's why they will say, oh, now we can identify where we went wrong or where we disagree. We don't disagree in the asal in the principle itself, we disagree on the implementation of this principle. I hope that this is clear. Let us take another example. Now, some people go to some mosques and they see in some mosques some innovations. For example, in some mosques, in some areas, they see that when people, when the Mu'addin is calling Adhan, he will say, Hayya ala khayr al-amal. Come on, to the best of actions. Hayya ala khayr al-amal. This is not the Adhan that most of the Muslims are endorsing and accepting. He will ask himself, now, where does this Adhan come from? He will ask the Mu'addin, where did you get this from? He will say, the Mu'addin will tell him, probably, that this is the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He will say, that is interesting. This is the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Let me check that further. He will ask him, where is it in the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Is it in Sahih al-Bukhari? Is it in Sahih Muslim? Is it in the four major books of Al-Hadith? Or, of course, he will ask him whether it is mentioned in Al-Quran or not. The Mu'addin will tell him, 
It is not mentioned in the Quran. It is not mentioned in Sahih al-Bukhari. It is not mentioned in the four books. But there is a book that says that the, some companions during that time used to say Hayya ala khayri al-amal. Our friend will check that book and he will investigate and he will see that this narration is a fabricated narration. Oh, so where did this Mu'addin go wrong? Where did this group or sect go wrong? Again, the steps are getting the correct sources, getting the correct understanding of those correct sources, and getting the correct implementation of the correct understanding. Where did this group okay, go wrong? They went wrong in what? Getting the correct sources of information. Means they did not get the right information or the authentic, reliable source that provides them with the authentic information. And that's why they ended up by having an innovation, which is saying Hayya ala khayr al-amal in the adhan. Oh, that is interesting. Now, see, brothers and sisters, we have developed our mindset. And this is one of the main aims of this series. Is to what? Is to develop the mindset of the brothers and sisters to have the right mindset so they can approach things and in particular they can approach Islam correctly. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope that you are finding it very beneficial. I hope that you are finding it very practical because that is the point. So, either you will go wrong in getting the authentic sources or you will go wrong in getting the right understanding of those authentic sources or you will get what you will wrongly implement what you correctly understood from the correct information or sources. If you go wrong in any of them, you will end up with a distorted or with an incomplete implementation, either with a distorted implementation of Islam or with an incomplete or innovative way of implementing Islam. And that is absolutely wrong. Insha'Allah, we will continue our discussion in the coming session. And I ask Allah Jalla wa ala to keep us firm on the haqq. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Mm-hmm.